Hi there, well, as promised, um, I said I was going to do another video and just give some ideas on um, a uh, three coil motor um, using a split ring commutator, and especially on the, um, the actual commutator itself and how I went about constructing that. Um, so I'm just going to take through some uh, uh, photos, pictures, diagrams here on my laptop and um, yeah, just give you an idea of how I actually went about making the commutator. So uh, <coughs> here we've got a uh, Google SketchUp rendered view. Um, basically you can see these, um, uh, well where the coils will be. Um, I just used um, three banks, one, two, three, three banks of three bolts each. Um, aligned at 120 degrees in between each, each bank. The commutator here um, basically was one of these. Um, one of this uh, PAL uh, TV aerial plug. As you can see there's a cut there which acted as one of the splits in my commutator. Um, so I bought one of these, gold plated, great for um, electrical current transfer. Um, and basically I had to make three cuts. Well as you can see there was a cut on the other side anyway so um, I needed two, actually two of them. But I needed to create uh, three 120 degree sections of this actual plug here. So um, basically, I just on a, on a sheet of graph paper, I drew a circle the same diameter as this um, plug and <coughs> uh, marked out the circle into 100, 120 degree sections. Just up to that, placed it on top of the paper, and with a little marker pen, a really fine tip marker pen, just marked those 120 degree sections. Then um, I used this fella over here, um, just a little rotary tool, little Dremel thing, and box of all parts here. Uh, the best part with this was this tiny little thing here which is a metal cutoff wheel and that is, I uh, don't know if you can read that, if you can't, it's um, 0.4 millimeters thick, which was great for making a really fine cut on the uh, commutator. Now, um, after making those cuts, I was left with three 120 degree sections, which looks something like, uh, where are we? Oops, wrong folder. Like that. I was left with three parts like that. 120 degrees each part because obviously it was a three coil motor um, and yes basically they have nice, nice straight cuts down there to create um, a very small gap in between each um, in between each um, section of the commutator uh, back here you can see that on that again that Google SketchUp rendered view little gap through there the gaps important the degrees between each gap is vital for the smooth operation of the motor. Um, and next, I had to uh, solder the connecting wires in, on the, in the inside of the commutator plates. These wires went through the centre of the armature shaft. Um, where's a good view of that? This one might show. It. Um, I haven't actually drawn the wires in here, but if you can imagine, on the, the inside of each of these plates, I've got two wires, um, uh, well, uh, one wire, one wire on each, one wire from each, running down the centre of this shaft, and they uh, also drilled holes in between each coil. And then this, those wires from the commutator plate went out through the shaft, and from then, from that wire there, I connected those to my coils there. Um, uh, where's a good diagram of operation? No, not that one. Uh, okay, here we go. Basically, this is how the um, three coil motor works with the use of a commutator. This is what I've called stage one of the rotation. Up here's my legend with the symbol notations here. Got two magnets here, north, south. This is a cross-section diagram looking down on the uh, 
through the middle of the armature and just see the, the three sections are commutated there and these are my um, or effectively my brushes in this instance here small n denotes a weak north induced uh, pole on the end of this um, coil strong south another weak north strong south is strongly attracted to this north end weak north is uh, repelled from that north and weak north here is attracted to the center of the uh, south uh, magnet there on stage two there's a short circuit across this point here as you can see the brush is, the brush is connected on both of those parts of the commutator there so it basically short circuits it so I can't run through this coil therefore there is no induced pole on this coil here however up here we've got a weak south force which is attracted to the middle of this north magnet and a weak north force which is repelled away and you can see the induced rotation is anti-clockwise in this case stage three strong north magnet induced uh, strong sorry strong north pole induced the end of this coil um, and weak south again strong north strongly attracted to the middle of here weak south repelled from the south weak south also attracted to the middle of this north magnet stage four got a weak north attracted to here weak south repelled away from the the southern main south magnet and again no induced current here um, basically the rotation of this or, or rather the transfer of current through here at any point across on this rotation will cause as long as the current is traveling traveling in the same way um, at any point of rotation of this armature will cause um, rotation in this direction provided the current is traveling in that direction because at any point in that rotation you're going to get forces in either of these poles which will either repel away from the south or and attract to the north or vice versa that's why the um, the three coil motor or uh, a commutator motor with at least three poles is most effective um, even more effective is yes yeah, six pole obviously which is basically the commutators divided into six sections and um, six coils that's a heck of a lot more work <coughs> especially when you're building small motors. This is my armature here. I actually ripped apart my motor to, um, to show it here. Well, oh, there's the um, armature there. You can see why it's a bit blurry on this camera. Sorry, it's not the best quality, but um, I still got a couple of bike bearings there. This is commutated there on the end, you can see. Well, can't quite see, but never mind. Um, and my big meaty coils. That's what I mounted it in. Basically, that stuck through there and on the other side of it were my brushes so I was able to just clip connect uh, positive negative terminals of my, um, of my battery and um, basically when that stuck when that was stuck through here that could rotate and the, uh, well, the current, current as current was transferred, and it, it was able to rotate freely. <coughs> Magnets I used. Um, these fellas here. These are incredibly strong uh, neodymium rare earth magnets. Actually, I have to keep them away from the laptop, otherwise, uh, funny things happen. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, have a look on the net if you want to get hold of these. They're not cheap. I think these I got these for about four or five bucks each. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, eight magnets. So it cost me about forty bucks for these magnets, but um, well worth it because you won't find any other magnets like it. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. That kind of gone through the um, making of the commutator, basically how the commutator transfers, or how the rotation works in that based on the commutator. I'll upload another video as well if you want to um, show you exactly how the transfer of current works in each of these to create, to induce either a weak south pole or a weak north pole or a strong south or north pole. Um, yeah, here's some uh, sketch up views of some experimentations I had with, uh, with magnet and armature arrangements, which I didn't end up using in the end, but um, yeah. 
that's the orientation of my magnets that I used in uh, the final final version of the motor. Have a look at the other video if you want to see the performance test. The um, maximum RPM I managed to get out of the motor was um, uh, around about 11,000 I think by, from memory, 11,000 RPM. Uh, so yeah. Alright, uh, thanks for watching and um, yeah, uh, post some comments if you want and ask some questions.